Hey everyone, FPS Chesley here. Welcome back to, I suppose this is, this is a tutorial, I guess I would call it more of a quick info series kind of thing. Um, helpful tidbits. This is our minimum approach distance to evade uh, an enemy torpedo and our maximum engagement range of an enemy ship. So using this information you can get a rough estimate as to how, clo how close you can get to an enemy contact and still get away from their target or how uh, far an enemy can be before you engage and more or less guarantee yourself of, of a hit at least in terms of the torpedo not running out of fuel so before we move on we have a few assumptions here uh, if none of you are familiar with engineering analysis all engineering requires assumptions we can't solve everything perfectly so there are just some things you have to assume and even then sometimes it's just a, a safeguard of conservatism but for this case it just makes it simpler so this is our minimum safe distance approach here to evade an enemy torpedo. Uh, this is at time equals zero, or TIW, uh, torpedo in the water. So at the moment the enemy torpedo is launched, we're assuming two things. One, the enemy torpedo is directly facing us and heading at us at, at max speed. And two, we are heading directly away from the torpedo and moving away at flank speed. Now this is important, uh, otherwise you're going to have to use some complex calculus to really determine this. And uh, it's just a little conservatism. We'll fix this later on by just adding some distance back in, some, some margin or safety factor, if you will, to use engineering terms. And then this applies the same way for maximum engagement range. Your torpedo is fired exactly directly down the line of bearing of the enemy ship and at max speed. And the enemy ship at torpedo in the water is moving directly away from the torpedo and at flank speed. And then uh, that's kind of just signified over here with this writing. So let us move on to actually deriving some calculations here. I came up with this all by myself, but it's really not too complex. The math is fairly simple. But then again, I am an engineer, so this might just be fairly simple engineering math. So the basic formula that we are dealing with here, we're going to write this, we're going to derive this formula in terms of words first. That's what that's what you want to do. Um, that's a good, good practice there is to actually write down in... in I would say in English, but in language, common speak as to what you're trying to solve for. So we want minimum safe distance. I'm only going to derive this one. Uh, it's the same basic principle for the maximum engage range. So minimum safe distance equals the range of the enemy torpedo. minus the distance your vessel will travel. So let me let me define what I mean by that. So the distance your vessel will travel is basically over the lifetime of the torpedo, how far will your ship go? Uh, that's an important piece of the that's the important piece of this puzzle. That's the if you've thought about this before, that, that might be the one thing that you weren't able to think of or that you were thinking of but not exactly sure how to derive it or solve for it. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna deal with that here. So let us further derive this term of distance. Uh, I'm just gonna sub, I'm gonna get engineering up in here. So dist vest. So that'll be our our little variable here. I might even further just reduce it to d d vest. So this is the distance our vessel will travel uh, during the lifetime of the torpedo. So this term here is equal to the time the enemy torpedo will run. So not just the distance of the enemy torpedo, but the time as well. So the torpedo will run for a set time. And then you want to multiply this. This is the multiplication symbol here. Uh, fancy multiplication symbol. Once you get into algebra, and x doesn't really work here well because x is also a variable. So don't worry about that. Just use a dot. And then distance your vessel will travel. Distance your vessel will travel. Excuse me, I looked at the wrong part of my video. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So this should be multiplied by the speed of your vessel maximum speed of your vessel. It doesn't have to be maximum speed, you can plug in any speed you want here. Just uh, 
the assumption here is that it's going to be a constant speed. So, and then further, the time your enemy torpedo will run. So this is going down to your basic velocity equals distance over time. So uh, just to, I'm not going to derive that. I'm not a physicist and I don't really remember that derivation. You just have to trust me on this one. But velocity equals distance over time. Now this may seem a little weird and uh, the concept of velocity may seem a little weird. I'm not going to get into the semantics of the distance of the difference between velocity and speed. For our purposes here, speed and velocity are the same thing. Uh, they can be the same thing. They're not necessarily the same thing. So to convince yourself that it's distance over time, uh, what are your car's speed limits defined in? We have kilometers per hour and miles per hour. So if you know anything about multiplication and moving variables around, we can rearrange this formula. Uh, you can do that by moving by multiplying both sides by time. So I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and do this because I don't want to take this for granted. I want to, I want you guys to see what I'm doing here. So ignore this for now. That was just kind of just to show that, uh, speed is equal to distance over time basically. So, if you multiply both sides by time times velocity equals distance over time times time. So the fact that you're multiplying both sides by time basically means you're just multiplying the equation by one. This is an algebra trick. So as you can see here, these times cancel out because time divided by time equals one, anything divided by itself equals one. So we get times time, time times velocity equals distance. Uh, we can further reduce this by dividing both sides by velocity. So we get time times velocity divided by velocity equals distance over velocity. So over here, the velocities cancel, and we get time equals a distance over velocity. So the time our enemy, oh, excuse, sorry, sorry. I've definitely been on the receiving end of this in an engineering lecture where everyone's like, move the paper down. We can't see anything. So now I know what that feels like. You just kind of get caught up in the calculation. So time equals a distance divided by velocity. So uh, let's just uh, let's just leave this as a uh, semantics for now with variable names. So the distance your submarine will travel, this is the next part of the equation here. Well, distance your vessel will travel from back up here. Distance your vessel will travel to derive that. So we have the one part of the equation derived. We have the time your enemy torpedo will run is now derived. So let us now derive the distance your submarine will travel or distance your vessel will travel. So D vess now, well, we were, we were, we were working on this before, but now we can plug this back in. So now we get, uh, blah, 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 blah. time the enemy torpedo will run, which equals distance divided by velocity. And this right here is just a little shorthand just to signify that this means torpedo. So I'll, that for all intents and purposes, this is just a subscript. Don't worry about this. This is kind of some fancy notation. So distance divided by velocity of the torpedo times the speed of your vessel equals the distance the vessel will travel during the course of the lifetime of the torpedo. So rearranging all of this back together, we get our minimum safe distance equals the range of the enemy torpedo minus the distance your vessel will travel. So we can all, we can finally simplify all of this to be, uh, did I put a shorthand for this? I don't know. Distance here, dist min safe, your minimum safe distance equals the range of the enemy torpedo range torp. time minus the distance your vessel will travel. 
minus d vs, which equals range torp minus the distance over velocity of the torp times the speed of your vessel. Yay, all very good and grand, but that's just the uh, that's just the wordy version. Let's get some numbers here. All right, bringing in the other sheet of paper. So let's get that equation back over here, and let's get some let's get some toims. Let's get some numbers here. So d min safe. All right, let's get ourselves some numbers here. So let's say we have ourselves a U set 80 against a 688i, and we are, we are, let me get my air quotes in there. We are the 688i in this problem. And then uh, we have a U set 80, so let's get some stats here. U set 80, uh, these are just for example's sake. Don't worry about how precise these are. That's not the, the purpose of this. The purpose of this is to sh plug some numbers in and see what kind of results we get. So please refrain from being nitpicky about my numbers. So you said 80. Range, 10 nautical miles. Speed, top speed, 50 knots. And then our 688i speed equals 33 knots all right so the range of our enemy torp is 10 nautical miles so let's bring this formula back down here and start plugging in numbers so our minimum safe distance equals the range of the enemy torp which is 10 nautical miles minus the distance I wrote this down as distance. This is confusing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get caught up in the variables. This should really be. This is range of enemy torp as well. So this distance here, distance of the torp, range of the torp, that might have been uh, self-evident. But we'll just plug that back in. We get another 10 nautical miles divided by 50 knots times the speed of our vessel, which is 33 knots. All right, so now we can uh, do some multiplication, cancel out some terms. Let's go start rewriting this on the other side, and we're just about done with our equation here. Equals 10 nautical miles, and then once we're done, I'll 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 draw out what these terms actually mean, so it makes a little more sense if you're having some trouble keeping up with this. So, we've got 10 divided by 50. So I could worry about maybe canceling out some units and trying to look fancy, but for our purposes, this is just 0 0.2 nautical miles per knot. I know that doesn't mean anything, but I'm just leaving like leaving it like that to show that these units cancel because a, a, something divided by itself equals 1. So then we have 0 0.2 nautical miles times 33, basically. So whipping out our handy dandy calculator because that is not a very nice number. I could have made it nice numbers, but I I didn't. So that gives us this equals ten nautical miles minus six point six nautical miles, which equals three point four nautical miles. So if you wish to run from a U set 80, this is your minimum, absolute minimum distance you can be from that Akula or whatever is shooting this U set 80 if you want to outrun it. This is the absolute closest you can get. If you're within this bubble, you will not be able to outrun this torpedo. Uh, of course, you can do some shicey maneuvering, move perpendicularly, or launch some countermeasures, but if you are within this radius of an enemy submarine that launches a U set 80, you will not be able to outrun that torpedo. The fuel running out of the torpedo is not a concern. It will have enough fuel. If you're outside this range, uh, then other things start coming into play. What's your bearing? What's your speed at the time of torpedo launch? What's the enemy torpedo's bearing upon launch, course upon launch? All those kinds of things are going to come into play. So basically what we're doing here, I'm going to get a little 
know, to derive this or just draw it out just to show what we're doing. I probably should have done this at the beginning. So we have our torpedo here. I'm gonna draw a torpedo. It's kind of a crappy looking torpedo, but you get the point. So what we're doing is at its time of launch, we are figuring out how far it will go. This is 10 nautical miles. So what we want, what we're basically doing here is we're taking our LA. I'm going to try and draw an LA. Brilliant, I know, thank you. There's our LA. So what we're trying to figure out here is you take this LA and then you run this out. And what we're basically doing is we're finding the point in space where the LA and the torpedo should meet as soon as the torpedo runs out of fuel. So we're not considering the lengths of these things, we're just considering them as points basically, but once they reach the same distance here of 10 nautical miles, this is when the torp will run out of fuel. And that's basically the concept behind this here. That's what that's what my logic was in deriving this. So yeah, so fudge factor. Um, maybe add in a nautical mile, 4.4 nautical miles, make it 4.5 to make it nice. and uh, if you get an enemy sub for their worst case torpedo in terms of distance, like the the 65 centimeter in stock that can run 25 nautical miles, this is going to be a lot bigger. So let me run those numbers real quick. Let me figure out what it would be for a 65 centimeter here. So for a 65 centimeter torpedo in stock dangerous waters, this would be, well, this would be a little bit higher first, but almost nine nautical miles would be your zone of no penetration. And, you know, that's 16,000 yards. That's pretty far. Uh, if you know my videos, I like to get within about 10,000 yards before I start doing any shooting or anything, coming into the maximum engage range kind of play. So you have to weigh those pros and cons. You're basically never going to stay outside this range. You're going to be getting within that range to engage a ship. So it's just stuff to take note of, stuff to, stuff to pay attention to. It's a cool little thing if you want to try and do a calculation on the fly if you can actually outrun a torpedo or not. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. That was me trying to do a salute. <laughs>